Jeremy Cook here, and today I've got something that I'm really excited about. It's an all-in-one oscilloscope based on the digital analog discovery to USB oscilloscope. This palm size unit usually hooks up to a computer, so you plug it in, turn on their waveforms software. With this, you could see all kinds of information about your circuit. Of course, you've got a traditional oscilloscope, but you've also got a signal analyzer, a voltage generator, logic analyzer, and, and all kinds of other tools. A lot of, a lot of which I don't even, I, I've just broken the surface on a lot of this stuff. Here you can see me zooming in on a generated sine wave. The red box on the left shows kind of the out, outside view of everything. And then on the right, you can see it up close and see the, the waves, the variability in the waves, kind of the, the static, I, I guess you could say. Here are the various components that I used on the build. Of course, I got the monitor that I have, I've had for several year, years, the Digital and Analog Discovery 2, along with the, the scope, the probe, uh, probe accessory, Pi 4 in the middle, power supply on the left, and then a wireless keyboard as a user interface. All this was laid out kind of as you saw there, and then I, I drew it up in Fusion 360 to make a nice, nice base for everything. This base will be cut out with a base amount, so M6 bolts can be used to just strap it to nearly any monitor you can find. In theory, even though the monitor is huge compared to other oscilloscopes, at least most of them, you could swap this out easily for something much bigger, or you could even plug it into a, a projector, which actually I'll have a video on that that I'm working on right now. It should be pretty awesome, so I'll link to that when it's available. These boxes just represent the, the keyboard on the left, the digital and analog discovery two on the right, Raspberry Pi in the middle, and the power supply on the left. With that modeled, I then then set the cutting pass in, in Fusion 360's CAM software. Use an eighth inch bit so I could cut out the, the holes for the M6 bolts, which are just under a quarter inch. That took me a little bit longer to cut out than if I'd use a quarter inch bit, which is pretty typical for me, but it seemed worth it not to have to set up things, or, or change bits, I should say. I thought I could get it cut on the x-axis like this with it laid out like this, but in fact, I had to rearrange it so it would cut on the y-axis because I just didn't quite have the travel for everything. So I took that apart again. My setup's pretty good for changing things over, but as you can see, it's not like a 3D printer where once you have things set up correctly, you can more or less press a button and it, it does its thing. Lock that down one more time. And then I, I set to work. Looking good. Always a little nerve wracking to begin with to see if it's gonna, gonna cut things out correctly or crash. But looks good. Not, uh, not destroying anything yet. Also, you can see the little light assembly there. It shows the signals in and out. That's my parallel lead emitter, as I call it. I did a video on that, so I'll put a link up to that as well. Unfortunately, I didn't cut quite deep enough, so I had to do some cleanup work. I'm just drilling through the M6 holes, the clearance holes here. Also, I had to grind the top and the bottom just to get the, the edges flat. I use a CNC router here, but it'd be easy enough to use a laser cutter or even hand tools to do this. Or for that matter, you could just, you could just Velcro everything to the back of your monitor if you wanted to not be real fancy about everything. I am using Velcro here. Here's the wireless keyboard. This hook and loop style fastener actually works so well that I should have used quite a bit of less, less of it on there for the keyboard that is. The power supply, the Pi, and the analog discovery too, however, they're gonna rarely ever move. So not having them move is, is a really good thing. There we go. And there's the digital and analog discovery too, kind of the heart of the system. Or you might say the Pi 4 is the heart, but Either way, that's, they're both pretty integral to the whole design. Looking good. Hook that up with a base amount M M6 bolts, low head screws, or button head screws. I've actually got four sets of base, base amounts here, so I could adjust it up or down if I needed to, but as it turns out, the middle was, was perfect. So good for me, I guess. Much of the cable management was a matter of wrapping the wires around the base, around the stand. It worked out pretty well, and after that was all wrapped correctly, it's the micro HDMI cable as well as USB-C hooks up. And everything's powered from the one power supply, so 
All you have to do is plug it in one time and you're all good. Ready for use at home or wherever you happen to have brought it. Unhook the Bluetooth keyboard, fire it up, and then fire up Waveform software. This seems like really good software. I, I have, as I alluded to earlier, I've only kind of touched the surface on what it can do. But fire it up, hook up the oscilloscope probes. And voila, you can see the little square wave that it puts out. You can zoom in and out on this with the, the mouse pad, or you can actually, there's actually a numerical input that you can use as well for, for this. You can set everything up. Everything's extremely customizable down to the colors of the, of the waveforms if you wanna, if you wanna mess with that. And of course you can modify things on the side of the DS212 and it'll show just what's been changed. There is a back still looking good, nicely set up, all the wiring's still intact. The set of wires here that I'm looking at are actually what come with the Digital Analog Discovery 2 if you don't buy the probe kit. I'm not sure how well it'll stay on there, but it is an option if you want to do signal analysis. The neat thing about this adapter though is that it's got adapters for BNC plugs for both scope probes or more generic adapters. It's got two plugs for, for probes and then two plugs for waveform outputs. The neat thing here is that it can generate waveforms at the same time it's using you're using the scope probe. So, so right here, what I'm looking at, I'm actually modifying the type of output that it puts out, and then I can hook up that up to the probes and measure it at the same time. Really great for experimentation or, or real work, actually. The target audience of the Digital Analog Discovery 2 seems to be students, but given its, its wide range of functions, there's no reason you couldn't use this professionally as well. Only thing is you're not gonna get the same sort of sort of performance as a scope that costs, you know, five thousand dollars, but considering what you what you have, I think it's a really really good way to get a, a scope and all kinds of tools for a fairly low price. I should point out too that since it's a Pi 4, it is a computer that you're you're using, so you could use a, a, a camera with this, you could use a a microscope, any other sort of test equipment that you could use with the Raspberry Pi, you can use this as well. You can also log on to it remotely via VNC or any other client that you choose to use. It seems to me that would make it a very ideal monitoring solution. So you could you could hook it up somewhere at a machine or whatever else and monitor to it from your desktop. Of course, I couldn't have the Pi just be bare, a uh, bare by itself. Pi 4 is supposed to get really hot and look kind of silly, look kind of bare without a, a nice ice case. Love these black aluminum cases. I'll put a link to it in the description. They're about $10 and do a really good job of passively dissipating heat. And they certainly protect the, the rig as well. Only thing is the adhesive on the Velcro didn't stick so well the second time around. So I might have to buy some more of that. The other thing that was a little bit insecure was the digital analog discovery too as well. When I tried to plug in the BNC plugs, it tends to go, go back and forth a little bit. So after a bit of design, it was back to the CNC router. I put four holes for the 632 screws that attached the, the BNC plug adapter, as well as a hole for a new button that'll actually power down the Pi, like a do a safe shutdown and also power up. Only thing about that is I've found that it powers up kind of intermittently without me touching it. So if you guys have any tips on that, do, do let me know in the comments. After that, it was time to take the last piece of protective covering off. And it looks pretty good. This time I did cut deep enough so I didn't have to have to do any th sort of final finishing work. Here I'm screwing the four 632 screws in. You can also see the three wire connector that I made for the, for the power supply. It's really convenient just to have alligator clips to be able to hook up to whatever at an instant. With that attached, it was time to attach the button head screws again. Everything went back just, just like it should have. It's always nice when things actually work. The light up button has two of the two of the leads connected together to make a common ground. And then the other side with the button, when you press it, it pulls everything, pulls the one button to the ground. 
doing the safe shutdown and the power up. Even if there are some inter intermittent power ups, it's it actually looks pretty awesome. So I'm pretty much okay with that. Lots of heat shrink to keep it to keep it in place and keep it from shorting. Looking good. Put the nut on the end. And then those four holes that I hadn't really mentioned before, they're they're designed for zip ties, so I can I can secure it. I actually designed in the the wire management to this, which I thought was pretty cool. Look that up and it looks it looks awesome. So it's hard to argue with that when something looks looks cool. Press the button and it turns on or turns off. I'm not really sure which one I'm doing here. Yep, turns off. Press it again and it turns on after a few seconds. And we're waiting, waiting a little bit more. And there's the red light. Looking good. Turn it around. And there is Raspbian, or Raspberry Pi OS, as it's now known. I guess you could say the operating system formerly known as Raspbian. Of course, I needed somewhere to put this in. Seems like YouTube likes videos a little bit longer, so I'll go ahead and uh, show you how I made the, the shelf for this. Cut up a board, stained it, and then put urethane on the outside. Looks looks pretty good. With that in place, as well as the one on top of it, my desk now has more space for more useful pursuits. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you if it inspired you to make your own, I put some links to a, a bunch of stuff in the description, including a couple articles on arrow.com about the system. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave me a comment if you did, just to let me know how you liked it or, or any questions that you have. I'd love to hear back from you. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy S. Cook, signing off.